What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingBee.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Git Bash terminal for your Django projects for Python on Windows. All right, guys, if you've ever tried to use Django on Windows, you probably use the command prompt or the PowerShell as your terminal. But if you did that, you probably know it's a little finicky, especially if you're using virtual environments, which you should be. It's not the greatest solution. And it's just much better to use a bash terminal like on a Mac. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, how to set up a Django project with the git bash terminal, how to set up a virtual environment. It's a little bit different than PowerShell and the command prompt and all that good stuff. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so first things first, we need Python. You probably already have Python installed on your computer, but you may have installed it incorrectly. So let's head over to python.org very, very quickly. And let me just show you this. So hit, hit the download button here and then just download the latest version. Doesn't matter what it is. Save it anywhere. I'm going to save it on my desktop. And it's a very small file. It installs right away or it downloads right away. Click it and run it. Now, here's the thing you may have missed. See down here, add Python 3.7 to path. It's unchecked by default. And you may have missed this, but you absolutely have to check this button to add Python to the path on Windows computer. That means we can run Python from anywhere on our computer, not just the Python directory, right? So we have to have that. So you may wanna uninstall Python and reinstall it just to make sure you did that. If you already know for sure that you've added your Python to path, and you can also do it manually. You can Google how to do that. It's really easy. I'm not gonna go into it in this video. So either way, make sure you've got your Python installed to path. It's going, it's doing its thing here and I'll just let it go. In the meantime, let's head over to Google and type in git bash. And we need the git bash terminal for Windows. And here it is, git-scm.com forward slash downloads. And it's just a little free bash terminal. It acts very much like the terminal that comes with Mac and Linux. So if you're on a Mac, on a Mac or Linux, you'll be familiar with all the commands. But if you're on a Mac or Linux, you don't need this. You'll just use the terminal on your Mac or Linux. So we're at 2.22.0 right now. If that's a different version by the time you watch this video, no big deal at all. Just download whatever the latest version is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this to download. Now this is a notoriously slow download site. Save it anywhere to the desktop or wherever. It's only 45 megabytes, but it takes like 30 seconds to download for some reason. I don't know why that is. It's always been a slow website. So no big deal. We'll just wait for this to finish up. And hopefully let's take a look at our Python. Python is still installing. We're almost done there. Okay, so this is downloaded. Let's go ahead and click this to install the git bash terminal. Now this is a weird installation. And I'll show you why. For one reason, there are like a thousand screens you have to click through to install this thing. And we just want the defaults for all of the screens. So we're just going to click next a bunch of times. So click next to, to accept the license. Next again. Now this is where it asks what text editor you're going to be using. And I happen to use the Sublime Text text editor. But if you're using something different, don't feel like you have to come here and just find it in this list. Just leave it as sublime because these two don't really interact together. So I'm not sure why they're asking for this. It's a new thing, but just, just ignore it. Just keep it as sublime. Click next, 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 next. And we don't care what any of these things are. We're just clicking next, next. And then finally we get to this install thing. Now I've already installed it on my computer, so I'm not going to do it again. You go ahead and finish installing it. I'm just going to cancel. And let's take a look at our Python. Okay. Setup was successful. Python's installed. Git bash is installed. So let's start using this. So head over to your Windows start menu, type in git bash, and that's just G-I-T-B-A-S-H, you know, and when you do, it'll pop right up, click on it, and this is what you see. Now, I'm in the PWD directory, uh, PWD to see what directory I'm in. I'm in my flat planet directory. That's just the name of my computer. Um, I don't think the world is flat. I just find it hilarious that some people do. So that's what my computer username is. Whatever your username is, you'll see it there. So what we want to do here is create a Django project and we want to set up a virtual environment for the Django project. So first things first, we need to make a directory, MKDIR, make directory, and then put this wherever you want. I'm going to put this in the C drive and let's just call this Django fun. We're just having a little Django fun this morning. So we've made this directory. Now we need to move into that. We need to change directories into that directory. So use the CD command, change directory. And then it's just C forward slash Django fun. And you can see it pops up right here. 
or we could type in PWD to make sure. Yep, there it is. Now we can LS to list the stuff in this directory. There's nothing in there now. Now, take a look at this. Let's go pip freeze. And this will tell us, oops, let's see. We have to restart our bash terminal real quick because once we install Python, we have to restart the bash terminal. Looks like the, it got installed first. So I'll just let me just pull up another terminal. Do some resizing here. Okay, so change into RC Django fun. Oops. Okay, now we can pip freeze to see what has been installed Python wise on our computer up until now, All right? And I've got a bunch of Django modules installed, but we can see right here, we've already got virtual environment. Now this is my computer. You probably don't have this. You want to pip install virtual ENV. Now it'll go through and install it. I've already got it installed. So it just tells me, hey, stupid, you've already got this installed. So, all right, so we're good to go there. So what we wanna do now is start up virtual environment. We need to initialize it first. And this is where it's a little bit different than PowerShell, right? So in a PowerShell, you would have probably just went, you know, you would have typed in virtual ENV and then a period to do it right in this directory. Or if you wanted to name this something, you would do it like that. That doesn't work in the git bash terminal. Instead, you need to type in Python dash M and then VENV and then name the thing. Uh, name the directory where you want all of your virtual environment setup files to go. So I'm just going to call this VENV. Let's see if that works. And it might take a second. But now if we ls to list the stuff in this directory, we see we now have this VENV directory. If we change into that directory and then list the stuff in there, you can see all of our normal virtual environment setup files are there. Now scripts, this is the directory where we would usually like in a PowerShell, run the initialization file to start your virtual environment, right? So I'm gonna CD back into that directory we were just in. So we are in now C Django fun, right? Let me clear the screen here. So now to start this, sort of initialize it to turn our virtual environment on, we, I think in PowerShell, we used to go something like uh, dot uh, scripts, well, you would do VENV scripts, and then activate, right, to activate it, turn, turn it on, something like that. Uh, that's not what you do this. This is more like the Mac version. You type in source, and then the directory where it is, so we're in VENV, that's where our setup files were, were put, and then that scripts directory, and then activate. And you, when we do see, boom, this pops up, this VENV or whatever directory you put it in. If you put it in SRC, SRC would pop up there. If you put it in virtual environment, virtual environment would pop up there. Whatever you name that directory a couple of steps ago, that'll pop up there. And you can see every time we hit enter, this shows up here. That means we're in our virtual environment. And we can um, tell that by going pip freeze again. Remember the last time we did pip freeze, it listed a whole long list of things. But well, now we're in our virtual environment. And so there shouldn't be anything in there because it's a brand new virtual environment. So it just takes a second here. And you see, boom, there's nothing there. So what we need to do now is pip install Django because we want to use Django. Okay, so that's finished. So we can pip freeze again to make sure everything was installed. And we can see, yep, sure enough, Django's been installed and a couple other little things. We don't really care what those are. And so, okay, we're pretty good to go here. And again, we still just have this VENV directory. We're in our Django fun directory. All right, so now we can just continue on with our Django project as you normally would. So we would want to create a new project. So it's just what, Django, oops, here, all right, Django, uh, admin.py start project and let's just call this um, I don't know fun stuff right all right so now when we ls we see here's our fun stuff directory here's our vnv directory if we cd into fun oops cd into fun stuff 
We have the screen in LS there. We have our manage.py file. We have our fun stuff directory. So we can go what Python manage.py run server. And this will run the Django server. All right, so it's fired itself up. This is what it looks like in the Git bash terminal. It won't do anything until you actually go to the web browser and try and view the, the website. So we can just go to local host colon 8,000, I think it is for Django. Yep. And we see boom, our Django project is successful. If we go back to the Git bash terminal, we can see it's doing its thing in the background. We can pull up um, a sublime text editor if we want. Go to project, add folder to project. Find, go to the C drive, find that Django fun folder. There's our fun stuff directory, single click it, select it. Boom, it pops up, you know, the normal startup files for Django and we're ready to go. And it's just that easy. So I recommend definitely using the Git bash terminal for your Django projects. I have in the past recommended PowerShell. It works okay, but if you've tried to use it, it doesn't always work great with virtual environments. Sometimes people get errors depending on how your Windows computer is set up, you can get different errors. And also it's just not that easy to push your code to places like GitHub to do version control, to push your code to a third party web hosting with PowerShell, with Git Bash, that stuff's built right in and it's super easy to do. And it's just a more sort of professional coding environment, the Git Bash terminal. It's familiar if you've ever worked with Mac or Linux before. If you're using a Mac, you can probably use most of the same commands on your Mac that we used in this video. I haven't confirmed that because I don't have a Mac handy, but uh, you know, to activate a virtual environment on a Mac, I think it's like uh, source bin slash activate or something like that. I've got a note somewhere, but you can Google that, but it's similar to what we just did here. So very cool. And I definitely recommend using the Git Bash terminal. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. You pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.